Okay, uh, students, sir. Uh, after this, we have studied inverse of all six trigonometric functions, sir. Now, let me list the domain and the range of all uh, inverse of trigonometric functions, sir. See, domain and the range here we will write. Before going to the problem, we will list it all those. Range is nothing but a principal value branch that one issued a number. Coming to the first one, that is a sign inverse. Sign inverse, what is its domain? What are the values you can substitute? Only the values from minus 1 to plus 1. This is the domain of a sign inverse. What about its range? Its range is a closed interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Coming to the second inverse trigonometric function, that is a cos inverse. Cos inverse domain is also same thing as that of a sin inverse, closed interval minus 1 to 1. And what about the range? Range is a closed interval 0 to 1. Coming to tan inverse. Tan inverse of x domain is all the real numbers we can substitute range will be minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. Sin inverse range, you can remember it like sin inverse range is minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 closed interval. Here tan inverse range is also same thing minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 but it is open interval. Coming to cosecant inverse of x. Cosecant inverse of x is all the real numbers except the interval open interval minus 1 to plus 1. And what about the range? Range is same as sign again except minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 except 0 in this. This is how we should remember. Coming to the secant inverse of x. Secant inverse of x domain is same as that of cosecant inverse of x. All the real values except the open interval minus 1 to plus 1 and what about the range? Range is same as that of cos except pi by 2 in that. Open interval 0 to pi except pi by 2. This is about the range of secant inverse of x. Last one, cot inverse of x. What is the domain? Domain is all real numbers. What about the range? Range is same as that of cos, but cos has open, sorry, closed interval cot will be having that is open interval 0 to 1. That's how that will put a domain and range of inverse trigonometric functions, all six inverse trigonometric functions, domain and range we have listed. Coming to the problems now. See, first problem, first example I have taken. Write the principal value of a sin inverse of 1 by root 2. Positive values are there, means inverse trigonometric functions of positive values are there, means you write it directly. You write it directly, it will be too easy. Here one thing you observe, write the principal value of, principal value in the sense that you remember what is the principal value branch of a sin inverse of x. Principal value branch of a sin inverse of x is what is closed interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 means if uh, writing the value of sin inverse of 1 by root 2 that value should lie in the closed interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 then uh, it will principal value otherwise no okay sin inverse of 1 by root 2 directly you write just to remember it like sin of which angle gives you 1 by root 2. We know sin 45 degree, sin pi by 4 is 1 by root 2. Means sin inverse of 1 by root 2 is pi by 4. You write it directly like this. Or else take sin inverse of 1 by root 2 is equal to y. This is nothing but 1 by root 2 is equal to sin y. 1 by root 2, we can write it as, in terms of sin, we can write this as sin pi by 4, sin 45 degree, which is equal to sin y. You see, sin sin get cancelled, this implies 
y is equal to pi by 4. y is equal to pi by 4. What is y? y is nothing but sin inverse of 1 by root 2. We have sin inverse of 1 by root 2 is equal to pi by 4. In the same way, write the principal value of tan inverse of 1. Tan inverse of 1 principal value you should write. So, we need to remember what is the principal value of tan inverse of x. Means the principal value branch of principal value branch of tan inverse of x is what is open interval minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2 tan inverse of 1 tan of which angle gives you 1 that is again 45 degree you write tan inverse of 1 is equal to pi by 4 Otherwise, we can solve it like take tan inverse of y, 1 is equal to y. This is 1 is equal to tan y. 1 in terms of tan can be written as tan pi by 4, which is equal to tan y. Tan tan get cancelled. y is equal to pi by 4. This is nothing but tan inverse of 1 is equal to pi by 4. Okay. Like this, in the same way, we can solve for tan inverse of negative values also, like inverse trigonometric functions of negative values also. But uh, you may go wrong here. That's why we will go with the properties of inverse trigonometric functions. Uh, that will be very easy. Next, uh, before going to the exercise, like uh, that is 2.1, uh, we will solve six properties, six important properties. Coming to properties of inverse trigonometric functions. I have written six properties, many properties are there. In that six, I have written here. First one is sin inverse of negative, means uh, trigonometric functions of one negative value is there. Sin inverse of minus x is equal to minus sin inverse of x. And these three looks like similar and these three looks like similar. That's why I have written like this. Sin inverse of minus x is minus sin inverse of x. This is possible only when x belongs to the interval minus 1 to plus 1. That is a closed interval. <coughs> See, uh, sometimes a textbook writes like this. First one, x belongs to. I am going to prove this is sin inverse of minus x is equal to minus sin inverse of x. I am going to prove this one. This is possible only when x belongs to the Close interval minus 1 to plus 1. Instead of writing this x values, this can be written like this also, where modulus of x is less than or equal to 1. What does it mean modulus of x less than or equal to 1? Modulus of x is equal to, we know that it can take two values. One is with plus sign, another one is with the minus sign. <coughs> you see, x less than or equal to 1 is one possibility. And uh, minus x less than or equal to 1 is another one possibility. So, x less than or equal to 1, fine. x values are less than 1. And minus x is less than or equal to 1 is there. Here what we do? We will multiply with minus. If you are multiplying with minus for inequality, sign of inequality get reverses. Means, uh, x greater than or equal to minus 1 becomes. You see, x greater than or equal to minus 1 and x less than or equal to plus 1 means uh, it takes the branch uh, closed interval minus 1 to plus 1. In the same way uh, or here modulus of x less than or equal to 1 and about coming to this cosine inverse of minus x is equal to here this is possible only when x belongs to the interval all the real values except minus 1 to plus 1. This can also be written as a modulus of x greater than or equal to 1. Modulus of x greater than or equal to 1 means, uh, you see, modulus of x greater than or equal to 1. Again, two cases are possible. One is with plus case, another one is with minus case. Plus x greater than or equal to 1 and uh, minus x greater than or equal to 1. x greater than or equal to 1 here. x greater than or equal to 1, x values are greater and here uh, minus x greater than or equal to 1 is there, what you do, you multiply with the minus, if you multiply with the minus, 
This will be x less than or equal to minus. If you are multiplying with a negative value or dividing with a negative value, sign of inequality get reverses. Means uh, less than becomes greater than, greater than becomes uh, less than, like that. So here, x values are less than minus 1 on the number line. Suppose here is the minus 1, here is the plus 1. We have to consider both the possibilities here. 1 to infinity and also minus infinity to minus 1. Means uh, this is nothing but modulus of x greater than or equal to 1 is nothing but minus infinity to minus 1 union 1 to infinity. This can also be written as all the real values except minus 1 to plus 1. Fine. Now we are going to prove this. Sin inverse of minus x is equal to minus sin inverse of x. What you do? Let me take sin inverse of minus x is equal to some value y. I can write it like minus x is equal to sin y according to the definition of a sin inverse. Minus x is equal to sin y, x is equal to minus sin y. x is equal to this minus sin y can also be written as sin of minus 1 because sin is an odd function. Sin of minus 1. Now we will write sin inverse of x is equal to minus 1. Sin inverse of x is equal to minus y multiplying with minus on both sides. We have minus sin inverse of x is equal to y. If this is equation 1 and this one is equation 2, both you observe y is equal to y is equal to. What we have from 1 and 2? From 1 and 2, we have sin inverse of minus x is equal to minus sin inverse of x. Coming to the second one, cosecant inverse of minus x is equal to minus cosecant inverse of x. We are following this. Same thing, same way you proceed. Let cosecant inverse of minus x is equal to y. This is minus x is equal to, this is first equation, minus x is equal to cosecant y x is equal to minus cosecant y, x is equal to minus cosecant y can also be written as cosec of minus mm -hmm. y. Yes, this can be written cosecant inverse of x is equal to minus y, mm -hmm. multiplying with minus on both sides, minus cosecant inverse of x is equal to y, this is 2. 1 and 2 you observe, observing 1 and 2, y equal to y equal to. Therefore, we have cosecant inverse of minus x is equal to minus cosecant inverse of x. Good. Coming to the third form, that is tan inverse of minus x is equal to minus tan inverse of x. This is valid for all the real numbers and the previous one, this is valid only when modulus of x is greater than or equal to 1. <coughs> tan inverse of minus x is equal to minus tan inverse of x. Let us take tan inverse of minus x is equal to y. This is minus x is equal to tan y can be written as x is equal to minus y by multiplying minus on both sides. x is equal to again we know that tan is an odd function minus tan y can be written as tan of minus y. Means, tan inverse of x is equal to minus y. tan inverse of x is equal to minus y multiplying minus on both sides we have minus tan inverse of x is equal to y. Let me take this as equation 2 and this one as equation 1. From 1 and 2 I have tan inverse of minus x is equal to minus tan inverse of x. Coming to the fourth property of inverse trigonometric functions that is cos inverse of minus x is equal to y minus cos inverse of x. This is possible only when x belongs to the closed interval minus 1 to plus 1. Again same way you proceed. Let us take cos inverse of minus x is equal to y. This is nothing but 
minus x is equal to cos y multiplying x, uh, minus 1 on both side x is equal to minus cos y as we did in the previous case minus sin y was there we wrote it as sin of minus y same thing if you do here also that is cos of minus y this becomes plus cos y because cos is an even function so we should not write it like this now what to do then x is equal to to have minus cos y we will modify this one as a cos of pi minus y cos of pi minus y means it comes to second quadrant pi minus y pi 180 degree and minus means again it is in second quadrant in second quadrant cos is negative we will write negative and uh, 180 degree 290s are there we should not change the trigonometric function the concept we have studied in the first puc that will be minus cos y yes we are getting the previous one here we have after this inverse trigonometric functions definition x is equal to cos of pi minus y becomes cos inverse of x is equal to pi minus y we have to separate for y yes what you do you interchange take this minus y to the left hand side cos inverse of x to the right hand side this becomes y is equal to pi minus of cos inverse of x if this is equation 1 and this one is a equation 2 you observe equation 1 and 2 both are y equal to y equal to therefore we have from 1 and 2 we have cos inverse of minus x is equal to pi minus cos inverse of x we need to know the difference between cos in, sin inverse of minus x and uh, cos inverse of minus x uh, clear coming to the fifth property that is uh, secant inverse of minus x is equal to we are going to prove secant inverse of minus x is equal to pi minus secant inverse of x this is valid when the modulus of x is uh, greater than or equal to 1 Second inverse of minus x is equal to, I am taking y, I am leaving this equation as 1, minus x is equal to second y, x is equal to minus second y, then again, same thing, second, second function is also even function, we can't write second of minus y, we need to do the same thing as we did in cos, second of pi minus y, according to the definition of inverse trigonometric functions, this becomes second inverse of x is equal to pi minus y. Yes. What you do? You take this minus y to the left hand side. This becomes second inverse of x plus y is equal to pi. Taking second inverse of x to the right side, y is equal to pi minus secant inverse of x. Name this as equation 2. 1 and 2 you observe. From 1 and 2, we have secant inverse of minus x is equal to pi minus secant inverse of x. Coming to the last property of inverse trigonometric functions, cot inverse of minus x is equal to pi minus cot inverse of x. This is valid for all the real numbers. <coughs> Let us take cot inverse of minus x is equal to y. We have minus x is equal to cot y. I am naming this as equation 1. x is equal to minus cot y we have. Then x is equal to, you see, cot y is an odd function as we did in sin cosec and tan case here also we can write cot of minus y but if you write the negative value cot of negative values cot you observe the range what is the cot range cot range is 0 to pi we should consider 0 to pi in the sense 0 to 180 degree only positive angles are there that's why we can't write here cot of minus y negative angles we should not substitute so what we do we will follow the procedure what we have followed for a cos and a secant so minus cot y can be written as cot of pi minus y. Again you see pi minus y 180 minus in the sense it comes to the second quadrant. Second quadrant cot is a negative. We will put the negative. Uh, 180, 290s. Even number of 90s are we will not change the trigonometric function. That will be cot y only. Okay.
according to the definition this will be cot inverse of x is equal to pi minus y you separate for y taking y to the left hand side cot inverse of x plus y is equal to pi then y is equal to pi minus cot inverse of x this is equation 2 from 1 and 2 we have cot inverse of minus x is equal to pi minus cot inverse of x with the with these six trigonometric means six inverse trigonometric functions we can solve the problems of the first exercise 2.1 very easily